Shanti playing in AMG. Let it rain on me. Not my hair, boys. I'm on my knees like that. Lord, please pray for me. Save the grace for me. Say, boy, what I want you want. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Shoot in my mouth, shoot in my th- and one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, on the real, I'ma take his soul. I'ma take him from his. Play with me, but I still gamble with it. We getting right before we take off on the landing strip. Know that you like all the attention that a fan gives. Say that you like me, but you way too young for marriage. I've been here before, I know exactly how it goes. Yeah, now I got you packing up your clothes. You can hit me up and let me know exactly when you close. I'm her favorite, says she need a. She wanna all day.
It's the NFL on EA Sports, and if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Seattle Seahawks. All that and more coming up next. It is a sound like no other when they raise that 12th man flag here in Seattle, and we just heard it, and that means it's time for football at Lumen Field. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? Turn set up here. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. And they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Man open downfield, it's Metcalf. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. But fortunately, he... touchdown, Seahawks. So that's about as crazy of a play as you're going to see. He lost the football, got it back, and took it into the end zone. And it's really tough on the defenders, isn't it? Because when they see a loose football, sometimes you end up kind of shutting it down and you go into fumble recovery mode and you forget about the guy who fumbled it in the first place. That ended up costing him. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit Painter. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Leading the charge will be their quarterback. Always fun to watch, Deshaun Watson. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent, too. They just saw a big strike against their team. And you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it. But otherwise... Just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense. Get things going and see how things settle in. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Oh, the ball is in. Watson lost it. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Fortunately for him, that ball stayed close so that he could recover it on his own. And you know the prayers that were going through his head as the ball escaped from him? <laughs> How happy was he at the end of it when he found the football again, able to retain possession? The 
fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Now Watson. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. Seven yards there at a first down. Cooper's coming off the season. We finished in the top ten in receiving yards, despite the fact he had five different quarterbacks throwing him the ball. If Cleveland can provide more stability under center, and they certainly expect to with Deshaun Watson, he could have an even bigger impact this season. From the 50, it's Watson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no game. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. They're exactly right. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. So now make that a second sack for them on this drive. And Brandon, we hear it every week when we go out to do a game. Everyone talks about playing complimentary football. Their offense goes down and scores. They see that, and they want to back them up, and that they did, getting two sacks on this first drive. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Oh, Walker showing the power, and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 14 yards that time for number 14. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Smith. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner? They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. He'll let this go deep for Smith and Jigba. And that's caught inside the 30. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A gain of 39 that time. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait 
for his crossing route to develop. And that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 26 yard line. Now Gino. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Devin Bush driving in and picking up the sack. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you've got a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's got to happen right now. Or very lights quickly. out. <laughs> or exactly right. Turn them out. That play's over. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Now maybe a free play here for Smith. Throw out wide to Walker. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Throwing is Smith. Got a man. It's Brown. Short completion, just four yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Geno out a throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of the times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We can always lock in on the skill position, guys. For those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. The first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, Things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now it's Smith. Under pressure, they got him again. Miles Garrett. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Throwing now is Geno. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So a touchdown on their opening drive and three more here, and it adds to their first quarter lead. Yeah, everything's going according to plan so far because the offense has moved the ball, defense able to do their job, and here the special teams unit comes through with their contribution. A field goal to make it 10-zip.
So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Now it's Watson. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Yeah, that's a nice pickup there, especially when it comes on the heels of a three and out the first time you have the ball. They were determined to not have that happen again. And that's a nice throw for their first first down of the game. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Watson. Open man downfield is Judy. He's got it. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 40. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Boye Mafe got to the line like a knife through butter. He buries him for a loss. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Here's Watson. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can deal with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there. And a heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And Chubb fighting, but nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped short of that first down marker. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down, because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Here we go on fourth. Watson. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Wow, first and goal, and defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. They'll run with Chubb. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll try again with Chubb. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now Watson on third and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. 
Deshaun Watson taking it in from four yards out. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Hopkins with the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas. Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that set. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Again, it's Walker. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And if that run looks familiar to you by Walker, it should. You saw it at Wake Forest, at Michigan State, and in the NFL here with Seattle. A nice start to his career, totaling a little over 2,400 yards from scrimmage and 18 touchdowns in his first two seasons. They'll try the air now with Smith. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Greg Newsom. He's to the 15. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And his kick is good, but flags come in. Looks like we're going to get a roughing call here on the follow-through. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. And this will wind up way short of the landing zone, so that's going to move the ball all the way up to the 40-yard line. Now we will get another look at Seattle's offense. And remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Sticking with Walker on second down. And a 42-yard line here and brought down there. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. 
Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. On the give, it's Walker. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And Walker once more. Breaks the tackle, now an alley. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 53 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy's setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Smith. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just need a yard here, second and one. Here's Smith. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked off by Grant Delpit. And the Browns are going to take possession here at their own 33. And partner, I think this is where long-term starters in the NFL separate themselves from the rest of the pack because there's still three full quarters left in this one. More than enough time to move past a pair of early mistakes and find a way to lead your team to a win. Mental resiliency, a characteristic every NFL team's looking for in their quarterback. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them, they feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Reek Willen. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And they'll take over here following the interception with good field position and a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Left side here, taken in by Metcalf. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. Smith now to throw. His throw incomplete. But there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. Here's Smith. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Some of the things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Sliding out of the pocket. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. 
did learn his lesson the first time. But looks like a second early interception got through to him. Now he understands. Don't force a throw if it's not there. Oftentimes, running is the better play anyway. Case in point, he picks up a first down there. To throw is Smith. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And the Browns are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. The turnovers, obviously, Charles, always costly. But, with, oh man, when you throw those interceptions in the end zone like that, it really stings. He tried to fit that one into his tight end. And I often use the expression NFL open, which means a tighter window. Down near the goal line, you really want him to be open. In this case, it cost him. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a second and ten. Watson now to throw. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Here's Watson. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Draymond Jones in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground of this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. On fourth down on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. They'll go ahead and down this one right on the chalk of the 20-yard line. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker and the Seattle offense. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not to any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 78 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first down. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Walker with another carry. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Smith, eluding the pressure right. Shoves him away. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 
23 yards on the tuck and run. At least this time he's getting hit after a positive play for his offense. The pressure was coming through yet again, but he certainly didn't stick around for the sack on this occasion. Found an escape route and ended up getting the first down before taking the hit. Now Smith being chased, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Miles Garrett able to get in there yet again. That's already three sacks for him here in this first half of football. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DN. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well, and that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. Back to throw, Smith. He'll buy some time right. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. The sack on first down took him out of a traditional running play and put him in a passing situation, but didn't stop him from running anyway, did it? No, I was surprised when he took off. I thought, oh, he's got some space. He might pick up five, six, seven yards. He goes all the way and picks up the first. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Just beating the play clock. Smith rolling to his left. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Well, this has certainly turned into a showcase game for what he can do on the ground because they're just continuing to give him chances to run it, and he's earning every additional carry by putting up positive yardage on each run. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Now Smith on the move to his left. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. Now Gino, flush to his right. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Ron Thornhill. And the Browns are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. CD, when he went to throw that, I'm not sure if he just didn't see where the defense was. Whatever the case, not the throw you're looking for on first and goal. Not at all, because, look, Let's face it, that close to the goal line, if you throw an interception, it's going to hurt on any down. But really, the only down you can kind of live with is if you do it on fourth down. The first three, if you don't have it wide open, just get rid of it. Make sure they can't get it and live to fight another down. First and goal, and you throw the pick, not good at all. After the interception, here's Watson. Looking for Cooper, that's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. To throw is Watson. Got an open man. Now the ball comes loose. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but... I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. 
How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. Now he's having himself a little bit of a banner game. His team right now, though, losing. Needs a little bit of help. And I kind of equate it to a basketball game where you have the big score. And sometimes your strategy is, okay, he can go ahead and have all of his points. Let's hold down everyone else. And that's the way you win the game. And right now, he needs everyone else to start scoring, quote unquote, as he's been. Yeah, and he's hoping to keep it close so maybe they can keep it on the ground, not start to go through the air as much. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Back to throw, Watson. Over the middle, complete to Judy. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That's good. The completion there for seven yards at its second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson steps away. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards you needed and then some, and made that snap a huge success. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Watson. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Moore, the man in motion. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. They juked him. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. Now a first and 10 at the 11. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. Call it a gain of a yard, and that will bring up second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher, third down and nine. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Watson. And yeah. oh, it'll be intercepted. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. And the Seahawks are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Charles, one thing that he referenced to us yesterday was his confidence fitting the ball into any window, but obviously that window was a little too tight and it was closing in a hurry. And he was talking to us about having anticipation in making those types of throws. Down near the goal line, I don't think you can anticipate it as much as you need to see it open. You've got to be precise with your throws down here in the red zone. That one goes into double coverage, and he gets picked off. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 
at their own 20 yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Down the right sideline. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Kenneth Walker, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks have regained the lead. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. The extra point now coming from Myers. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones... They find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Chubb on the counter. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Now Watson. Flushed out. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Boye Mafé coming in to drop it for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And it's fielded at the 34. That's a 49-yard punt, eight, though, on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And, Charles, the name of the game last time, efficiency. Their very first snap, they connected for a quick touchdown. They get more value than just the points from that series as well. Only needing one play, it keeps the entire offense rested up. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. 
Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Stick it with Walker on second down. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Well, the Seahawks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Hand off here to Walker. He gets away from one, and he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The Seahawks will call on Michael Dixon on fourth down to punt this one away. Back deep, Naheem Hines. Fair catch called for and collected right at the 10-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 11. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's going to be caught by Judy. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Jaron Reed in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't, and a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. It's fielded at the 45. An eight-yard return there after a punt of 47. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. down incomplete good coverage there forced the ball free and it's second down well they've had success getting the ball to him out of the backfield but this time they had a man right on him he was able to break that play up before he could get started smith an incomplete pass on first down now it's second and ten throwing now is gino open man that's noah fant the tight end and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Here's Smith. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. 
Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the gun, here's Smith. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that brings up third and a full ten yards. They went to their big body tight end on second down in hopes that he could plow his way to a first down. But they were ready for him defensively and ended up holding him to a modest gain. Here's Smith. Rolling to his right. And now look at this. Big gain by Fumble. And this is picked up by the Browns. Partner, everything that happened before that fumble was great. Good vision, navigated the open field, got good chunk yardage. At that point, if you see a defender coming up, just step out of bounds. Don't risk all you picked up before the hit to just try and get an extra yard or two. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. They begin this drive with Chubb. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Second down, here's Chubb again. Pushes past him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. And Chubble trying to middle here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Watson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. From the 50, it's Watson. Completes it right side to Cooper. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. What a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Here's Watson. Going out wide, finds Chubb. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you. All right, so if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. Following the fumble recovery, Smith. It's caught, lock it. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now Gino. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. A shotgun snap for Smith. They'll roll him out right. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. To the air again, Smith. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. And try to find Jackson Smith and Jigba. And it's second down. Out of the gun, Smith. He lets it fly for Lockett. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in, touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks will extend their lead here just before halftime. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Now Myers for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. 
That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. Now they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. The final shot before the break, Watson. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. For the Seahawks in the first half, they were led by their quarterback, Geno Smith. He's over 300 yards passing already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Jason Meyer is to kick off for Seattle. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. And able to get this out to the 25. The Browns offense and their quarterback, Deshaun Watson, set to take over once more. And it's been a struggle for him all afternoon. This defense has really done a nice job of making him earn everything he gets. And it's prevented him from getting into any kind of rhythm here today. The Cleveland offense ready to go. All in all, pretty manageable deficit, Charles, here as they start this third quarter offensively when you consider the fact that in the first two quarters, they had two costly turnovers. I think you laid it out there perfectly, partner. Very tough to hold a lead going into the break if you continue to hand it over on multiple drives. Yeah, and obviously, Charles, it would be very tough to climb back into the game if those turnovers continue. I would say borderline impossible. You keep turning it over, I don't know how you make up a deficit. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. To throw is Watson. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 23 yards, the final tally. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that could really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw, Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. This is second and eight. A toss play to Chubb. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. 
It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Making now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now. Making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Ochina Nuosu in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to Fort Dell. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skim the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, yeah. meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. The Seahawks offense and Geno Smith headed back out for this next possession. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Geno out of throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, after watching him ring the bell that many times and putting Paul in the end zone, throwing it, he had to figure they had to bring some type of pressure. They had to change things up on defense. And able to get to him, put him on the ground, so maybe just something to throw him off a little bit. Yeah, that had to feel a lot better for the defensive guys. They've been getting carved up in this one. To finally knock him on the ground and force an incompletion, that's got to be a sigh of relief. Sliding out of the pocket. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Smith, out to his left. There he goes again, and finally down at the 32-yard line. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Let's give him the credit he deserves because he can really do no wrong. It's got to be demoralizing for a defense to have someone who can cut up your secondary all game long with his arm and then rip off a huge game like this with his legs. A championship effort from that man under center. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 32-yard line. Back to throw, Smith. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Then their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Throwing is Smith. Escaping the pressure right. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. That last run, one of many that we've seen from him, and it's going to be the one that breaks Colin Kaepernick's single-game record of 181 rushing yards, set back in the divisional round of the playoffs in January of 2013. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man Cubs are so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. To throw is Smith. Steps away to his left. He throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. 
I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds a defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Third down just got a lot tougher. That will officially go as a loss of seven. Now Smith. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. With the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. drive about to get started see if they can put this drive in the end zone Charles because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times they've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald out drives so are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game is that what you're trying to say yeah. well I mean I'm okay with it I have a feeling that this offense they don't want to see the punter again and frankly the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself he would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Watson. Quick throw, and he's got Amari Cooper. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard here. They go up the middle with Chubb. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he is caught. Room to maneuver at the 35. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 24-yard line. Off of play action, it's Watson. Polluting the play. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Well, this is getting ridiculous. Eight sacks now. That time, multiple guys get to it. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to draw him something good here on third and 13. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice 
nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. They'll try and run the option, and he's going to pick up the Browns' first down by a good couple of yards as they get three there on fourth and inches. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 of the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. Second down. Here's Chubb again. And from the 9, they get this to the 5-yard line. This red zone is where the Seahawk crowd really makes it tough for an offense to communicate. It's third down. Now it's Watson. In trouble, and he'll go down back in the 12. Jared Reed able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Well, we saw him score on the ground earlier in the ball game. This time, the defense says not so fast. Yeah, that's good scouting and good awareness, isn't it? Because you always have to be wary of him keeping it himself, especially in this part of the field. Because if he doesn't like what he sees, you know he'll take off and try and go for it himself. Hopkins' kick is good. But now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. And this is going to be roughing the kicker, an inexcusable penalty, Charles. You've worked so hard to hold him to a three-point kick. Now you give him the ball again with a chance for a touchdown. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. They give the chub out of the gun. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. Chubb is into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. For as good as Nick Chubb is in the open field, he's every bit as good when they line him up down near the goal line. He's a speed back between the 20s, but a power back down close, and he forces his way into the end zone. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And the lead will shrink to six. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small. That's caught at the 25. It's a big play there for Seattle. 55 yards. Boy, this has just been an offensive clinic. It's seemingly been one big play after another, after another, and add this one onto the list. When you can fight off more than half the field on one play, <laughs> things are definitely working in your favor.
So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. Throwing now is Gino. That completes it again to Metcalf. Touchdown! DK Metcalf. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. The extra point now coming from Myers. And the lead is now 13. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo, the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Watson. He's got the connection to Cooper. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Watson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. Get a look at D.K. Metcalf as this offense returns to the field. And now he's inching closer to a 200-yard game. He's been so solid. And he's really denting the pride of the guys playing defense, too, because there's certain barriers that you just don't want to give up. You never want to give up a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver. He's closing in on 200 yards. Wow, that's a really big game. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Here's Smith. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Juan Thornhill. And the Browns are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Oh, that's a beautiful read there by the safety. It's zone coverage, so he's just going to sit back and watch. He knows he can't get beat deep because he has the end line to protect him. So he can react to everything in front of him, and he makes a great break on the football and comes down with the interception. Cleveland offense making their way out. Right now, they're in a bit of a tough spot here, CD. You trail him by double digits. Remember the last time out, 
They fumbled. They're going to have to play some clean football here on this possession. And all the talk on their sideline has been about taking care of the football, making sure that they're handling the ball correctly. So you know they'll be squeezing the rock pretty tight here. They just have to be careful not to go so hard in doing that that they actually cause themselves other problems. Take care of the ball, but still try and play free and natural. After the interception, here's Watson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. But, of course, that's not an easy man to sack. You know how elusive he can be trying to get outside of the pocket. That was a great play on the defensive side. Now, I wonder what was going through his mind because he didn't seem as committed to using his legs to pick up yardage. He wanted to keep that play alive to either take off and go or throw it away. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Draymond Jones picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Better need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? They'll set up a throw. They find some open field here. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD. Got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. Here's Watson. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but it left him no room to run as he goes straight out of bounds. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. You've got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. give this is Chubb and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down well, that's just a pile of bodies there and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy right who can stand up and make a play it's only a three yard run but for both sides they had to walk away from that field I'm like okay I can stand up when the going gets tough in here and that'll fall incomplete he was hit just as he let that go and now it's third down. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. From the 50, it's Watson. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense. Six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. The Browns send out their punter now. As they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. This is taken at about the 14. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And the last time out, they had the good drive going. You get in the red zone. They throw the interception. Not their first pick of the game either. So we'll see if they're more careful, more cautious here on this drive. And now here is another interception. 
Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. So that potentially a turning point here this third quarter. A two-score lead down to one now following the pick six. And that had to be the message at halftime for this defense delivered and accepted. We need to go out there and make something happen. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. The PAT good. It would draw him closer, but hold on just a second. A flag is down on the field. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this is not going to wind up anywhere near the landing zone. So this will be blown dead. And they'll move it up to the 40. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 right at the 30. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Oh, some strong running. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 111 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. And going right back to Walker. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Here's a second and five. Up the middle, here's Walker. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Straight ahead, Walker. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. From the 25, here's second and a yard. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. 
All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now a run with Walker. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with the possession. They also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth and final quarter. They'll give it up to the big man, Walker. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. And even 150 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive is eating up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Here's Walker. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. And yeah, give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Here's Smith. Flush to his right, and he's going to be swallowed up and taken down. Sacked back at the five-yard line. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now Gino rolling to his left. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Geno Smith, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks are able to build on to their fourth-quarter lead. And that's certainly an important touchdown there and makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. The Seahawks offense staying put out on the field. They're going to go for two. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. And so they run it in on the two-point try. And so often, Charles, we talk about from the offense's perspective what you do with a two-point conversion. How about the defense? How do they play run versus pass? It's really difficult for them because I think most teams want to play for the pass. That's what they see most teams do. And so are you able to mass enough people inside if a team decides to run it? Very difficult. I think what you're seeing a lot more now, people blitzing the two-point conversion. They want you to make a quick decision and make it right now. There the offense wins the battle for two. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 22. 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Out quickly to Judy. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure they only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Watson now to throw. And he'll get this one to Cooper complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Throw right side is going to be caught by Judy. And he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. To throw is Watson. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. From the gun on third, Watson. And yeah, that is incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Into the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Smith. Flushed out right. Sheds off the tackle. And yeah, they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Now it's Smith. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. That time, Charles, great job keeping him in the pocket and not letting him escape. And Brandon, I think this was a great example of the front and the back working together, meaning the back covering, no place to go with the football. And the front, terrific job on the edge, so he couldn't escape outside. And then, of course, the inside pressure kept him hemmed in as well. 
And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Partner was a definite passing down, but he was able to leak out and pick up some good yardage, even though the coverage was excellent. Maybe it's not exactly how they drew it up, but he still got a big chunk of yardage on second down. Geno out of throw. Escaping the pressure right. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 40. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Now that's a killer because you think you get it absolutely covered and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third and then the tables turn. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now right at the 40. Smith now to throw. Staying on his feet. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. So after the sack here, second and 14. Smith. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And this offense on third down today, they're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and 14. Now Smith buying time to his left. He's got Brown on the out route complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Eluding the pressure right. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Partner, there's a downside to everything, and the danger of man coverage is if you're locking down your target, you often turn your back to the quarterback, and you don't see him. Sometimes you open up a big lane for him to hit you for big yardage, and that was an astute play by him to scramble out, see that lane, and burn them for a first down. So after the conversion on fourth, here's first and 10 just outside of the red zone. Back to throw, Smith. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception. But playing this way is what got him this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. He'll buy some time right. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. At this point, this offense feels like they could just roll out anything, and it would work. They are certainly in no hurry for this one to end, not when they can rack up some stats and continue to add to their lead. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Throwing is Smith. On the move to his left. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. 
Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for sure. He finds Smith and Jimbo in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Now Myers for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it was capped off by Jackson Smith and Jim, the touchdown catch. For the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. Ochenna Nwosu giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Back to throw, Watson. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. The Browns send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. They'll look to set up his blockers. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And they will take over first and 10. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. This is Fant on the short completion. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. From just shy of midfield, here's second down at seven. Now Smith steps away. And Smith able to move the chains before sliding down. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. the 32 now. Here's first and 10.
Throwing now is Gino. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. But their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? To throw is Smith. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. They snap it to Smith. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Martin Emerson. And the Browns are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. Well, that interception at least offers them a glimmer of hope here in the fourth quarter. It certainly does if their offense goes out now and makes it pay off by getting into the end zone. And if it does, then they get a chance to get back out on the field and try and do it again. Maybe they can force that offense into more and more mistakes and give them a chance to get back into this one totally. They have still a three-score hill to climb. We'll see if they can do it. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. The interception was a good starting point, but still a huge hill to climb with his three-score deficit and time fading. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10. At about the 32. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Dancing to his left. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Late in the game, he's certainly doing everything in his power to buy time for his guys to make a play, but in this case, he's surrounded, and all he has room to do is to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. Watson. And now Watson throws another interception. Picked off by Jerome Baker. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Well, offensively, Charles, hard to put a silver lining on this one. No secret that they had to take chances with a score where it is, and it leads to a turnover. I love how you paint the picture, partner, because you're exactly right about that one. Look at the empty stairs on that sideline. This is one of those games where you just want to go crawl under a rock until it's over. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. After the interception, here's Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's Smith. And he whips that one incomplete there. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. He could not get away that time, and it'll be a loss of 11 on third down. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. 
Here we go on fourth. Smith. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. The Seahawks go for it but can't convert. And this Browns defense stands tall. So that's the second time this game they've given it up on fourth down. They're now one for three on fourth down conversion tries. But they must feel good about what they're doing, right? They continue to go for it on fourth down. Give the defense a lot of credit, though. They've stopped them two out of three times. Usually, you have fourth down plays that you have dialed up and ready to go and you think are going to be successful. Not so far in this game. Second and a couple. Here's Watson. Then he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Now Watson. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sat back at the 38. Now it's Watson. Forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Here's Watson. Flush to his right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Draymond Jones able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Jared Reed in there to take him down on what will take us to the two-minute warning. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Faking the give, now Watson. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Deshaun Watson finding Amari Cooper. And the Browns have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. That's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? Just go long, <laughs> man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Seahawks, looks like they've recovered. They have. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. Smith going to throw it. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. He completes this to Walker. Still fighting for more. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts 
as he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now Gino. That's going to be caught. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Smith. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Second down and goal. Smith flushed out right. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. The plan was clearly to challenge them by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He doesn't scramble for a first, but he does get the last lap by baiting the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure that yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. To throw is Watson. Incomplete, seven seconds remaining. The Browns send out their punter now. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Taken right around the 44. Well, Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.